hi, my name's Matt, and I'm an intern here at Gorgas. Uh, thanks for coming out today. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about apps. So most of us have smartphones and tablets these days, and we all know how easy it is for those to distract us from class with text, games, social media, wiki holes, and everything else the internet has to offer. So a lot of people don't realize that their potential to help with school. So I'm just going to touch a bit on some of the apps out there that can make school easier. Most of these are available for iOS and Android, but there are a few that aren't that aren't that are that are OS dependent. And I also try to let you know which ones aren't free. Um, as we go along, I plan to demonstrate a few features of some of the apps and tell you about how I use them. So since this is subject to the speed of my phone, the apps, and the network, you may have to bear with me sometimes while things load. If you have any questions or comments along the way, feel free to ask. So the first couple of apps I'm going to talk about are at least I feel mandatory here at UA. Those are of course the Alabama and the Blackboard Mobile Learn apps. Both provide quick access to most of the features that you can find on their respective sites. And so the Alabama app is basically just my Bama for your phone. Um, you can do things like, like find faculty and staff contact information. So like a few weeks ago I was working on this Google Map for a class project and I had to use this app to find the email address of another professor who I was told had some experience with creating Google Maps. So you basically just have to type in someone's name and search for them and it'll bring up their office number, it'll bring up their their office phone number, their office number, their email address, and all that sort of stuff. And you can also view campus maps, which I personally could have used several times at the beginning of a semester when you're in a class in a new building you haven't heard of. All you have to do is type in the name of the building and it pops it right up there on the map and you can see where it is. And see, I typically end up Googling UA maps and then clicking and zooming the UA PDF, which is really annoying. This, this really simplifies that. Uh, you can also check on your grades and your, uh, your ticket exchange program and your class schedule but you gotta log in and it's kind of a pain so I'm not going to demonstrate all that right here now. Um, you can also um, find information about the campus library and check library hours and events. It'll show you which libraries are open and their hours for today as well as the events on their schedule. You can also see Crimson Ride schedules which this actually a, a, requires an additional app called Rider and you can contact 348 Ride. You can find emergency service information, check the balance on your app card, order books from the soup store. And uh, another thing I thought was really interesting was if you live in one of the dorms you can actually use the laundry button to see if there are washer and dry washers and dryers available in your dorm so you don't take your clothes all the way downstairs just to find out that all the machines are full and have to go back upstairs or wait on the machine. Um, the next app I want to talk about is the Blackboard app and you can see you can access it here from the Alabama app or you can just access it from your home screen. And of course it's like the website, it provides more information about individual courses so you can, you know, you can check your class grades, you can view integrity recordings of class um, classes, and of course you can visit your home page and see things like your syllabus, course calendar, assignments, those types of things. And if it's an online class and you have the Blackboard Collaborate app too, you can actually join that right from the app too and attend classes using your phone if you can't make it to a computer. Um, the next thing I want to talk about are cloud apps, which for those who don't know, data clouds are kind of the current revolution in data storage, and these clouds and the software provided by their owners allow the files, allow your files to be accessed remotely from your personal computer, your smart device, or other campus computers here on campus or at a friend's house, at your parents' house, pretty much anywhere you have internet access. And they're great for backing up data and also for syncing files between devices. The cloud that I like to use is the UA Plus Box Cloud provided here for UA students. The actual app's just called Box, but you can sign in with your Bama credentials and you get more storage compared to a normal free account. Um, there's also plenty of others out there like Google Drive, which I also use pretty frequently, Dropbox, iCloud, Microsoft OneDrive, and several more. 
and it's basically just like browsing folders on your computer you can see all your your documents in there um, most of these apps and services are free but they do come with caps unless you're willing to pay subscription fees most of the free services like Dropbox and Google give you about 5 to 15 gigabytes with UA plus box here you actually get 50 gigabytes which is pretty big for free storage and you may notice some uh, Word or PowerPoint or Excel files in my box. Another great thing about the stuff the university provides us is that they give us access to Microsoft Office 360, so it's a, usually a pretty good idea to download some of the apps that you might use. You don't have to download all of them, but I personally did download all of them because we have access to them. <clears throat> But um, you can basically just open your files that are, or you can sync them with your cloud accounts and open your files from your cloud accounts, make little edits that you need to make. Just to save while it loads. It does have to download the, the documents from the server before it saves them. Then you can make changes. Just add a line here. And then when you're done, you click done and back, and it saves it saves the the document to your cloud drive. And then when you get back home on your computer, you can access it and see all the changes that you made there. And this works, like I said, with all of the the Microsoft Office uh, applications like OneNote, Word, Excel, and Power and PowerPoint. Uh, OneNote is also good for for taking little notes. You can add photos or make lists like grocery lists and they're also and you can take class notes on it if you like to but I don't really use it for that but um, there are also other apps like Evernote out there but I tend to stick with the OneNote or the built-in apps that I'm used to another good app is um, the papers app and also the Goodreader app if you care to spend the money on Goodreader but papers basically lets you import PDF files and create organized and searchable lists of the files and you can also view the files and as you can see you can well, you can highlight text on the files very easily just by selecting it and it highlights it if you've got something important you can circle it or draw a line under it and you can also add comments to sections of text that you've highlighted or that you find particularly important and if you if you have a if you sign up for a free papers account you can actually sync this with your papers account and then you can use um, you can go and view your annotations and your comments and all that type of stuff on your computer once you get back home to it and Goodreader works similarly probably with a few more features but as I said it isn't free so I, I don't have it and unfortunately, both of these apps are only on iOS. Um, PDF Pen and GoodNotes are also worth mentioning because they allow users to edit PDF files, but again, they aren't free and they're only on OS X, so we're not really going to talk about those. I mean, iOS. Uh, another cool app that I found out about recently is Pocket Points. So, Pocket with Pocket Points, you actually earn points for being on campus, logged onto the Wi-Fi while you're not using your phone. It was actually designed to reward students for fighting the urge to not play on their phones during class. So what you earn points by keeping your phone locked while you're logged into the Wi-Fi on campus and the points can be redeemed for things like free food from Papa John's, Krispy Kreme, Moe's, and Buffalo Wild Wings, and also for discounts on other things like music, clothes, shoes, entertainment, and several things. You can see, you can see that the app is counting down the time until I receive my next reward. So you do have to go to this screen and lock your phone on this screen to earn points. If, if it's on any other screen, you won't earn the points. So you do have to remember that. And I think you earn a point for about every 30 minutes, so you're not going to get free stuff super fast. But it's money for nothing, and then every time you open your phone, that screen's there to remind you to stay off your phone. And also, they offer double points on Tuesday, and the more people on campus using the app, the more quickly the points build for each individual user. So I keep mine on pretty much anytime I'm on campus, whether I'm working here at the library or just walking around campus between classes and not playing on my phone. 
Speaking of uh, apps for establishing good habits, To Do is all, is another app that's that's useful for that, and it's great basically for keeping up with assignments, tasks, to do lists, and all of your appointments and dates. And the interface is really simple, even compared to using the built-in calendar software. And as you can see, it allows the items to be sorted by school, work, or personal, however, whatever kind of folders you want to create, basically. And if you create an account again, it can be synced between your mobile devices and your computer, so you can view and edit these things from a computer as well as your, your phone or your tablet. Basically to add a note, you just click the little plus, type in what it is that you need to do, and it can either create a task where you can go to details and change the date and time, the priority, set it to repeat, or give you an alert when it's time. And you can even add actions like having your phone call or email or display a map or something like that at a certain time, or even open a website at a certain time according to your to-do list. And then once you're done, once you've completed the item, you simply check it off the list and it drops to the bottom of your list under the completed items tasks and eventually you can either delete them or they delete themselves. Now this, this, uh, this app is $5 and it's only available on iOS but it's, it's still a great app. And as you can see, another thing that's nice about it is if you miss apps or apps are overdue, it lets you know by highlighting them in red or by sending notifications if you turn notifications on for the app. So Feedly and Reader are good apps for keeping up with the blogs and RSS and social media and in pretty much any other updated content. While Reader is only available for iOS, Feedly is available on both platforms and free, but Reader is also $5. So with Feeder, you, Feedly, you basically create an account either on your phone or on your computer and then add blogs or other items to follow. And once you've signed in, you can flip through the items and, and view them in your feed. You can also, you can also share the items directly to Twitter by, by clicking the, the Twitter button or share them to Facebook, text messages, email, or pretty much links, just however, so there's several options for sharing. And you can also choose to view them in the browser if there are extra pictures and things like that that you'd like to see that are only available on the actual website. Now I only use Feedly really for keeping up with blogs. You can actually keep up with a lot of things with Feedly, but I kind of keep it separate so that I can just keep up with blogs on, on the app. For keeping up with everything else, I use Flipboard. And Flipboard basically reads like an online interactive magazine where you can flip the pages. Um, the app offers topics in the news and on the web that you can choose from to populate your magazine. And it further allows you to add RSS feeds. You can link your social media accounts like Twitter, Instagram, Flickr, Facebook, and you can even add newspaper accounts like the New York Times or Wall Street Journal or Washington Post. You can see that I have my New York Times account linked here. Um, this basically allows Flipboard to serve as kind of an all-in-one personalized news source that's specific to you and your interests. And it can really help Simplify keeping up with your network and your news. Uh, you can see that you can that you just basically flip the, through the pages of the apps. If you find something interesting to read, you click on it and it'll load the full app. And every so often, you can see it offers new topics for you to follow based on the topics that you're reading or the topics that you've already followed. And because it's free, it does come with ads. And some of them are videos, but the nice thing is you don't have to sit on the ad for a certain amount of time. You simply flip the page like in a real magazine and the ad's gone. It also allows for articles like tweets, updates, blog posts, etc. to be instantly shared with others through Facebook, email, text message, Twitter, several other ways, several ways to share. Just a few days ago, I came across an article on Flipboard about patients who wake up paralyzed during surgery, well I happen to have a classmate who's really interested in this phenomenon, so I just simply click the share button, 
clicked on Twitter and then I tagged her in it and submitted the post and I was able to share that article with her which I'm hoping she found interesting with just basically no no trouble so speaking of magazines browsing is another service provided by the university it allows subscriber it allows users to subscribe to scholarly journals and browse the new issues as they're released this often leads to a kind of serendipity in finding information so I don't know about you but I have trouble coming up with research topics for essays and projects quite often Maybe I have too broad of an interest, or maybe I'm just thinking inside the box too much. But this helps with this and gives the opportunity to stumble upon interesting topics in your field without having to sit around and come up with a topic on your own. So you can create virtual shelves for journals of, that are in topics that interest you. And the app actually provides little notifications when there are new articles in the journals that you're subscribing to but you can populate your, sh your shelves with these apps and you can, you can see you have several shelves which you can dedicate entire bookcases to certain topics or just certain shelves for smaller subtopics, I guess. And you can view the journal, you can open the page, it does take a minute to download. And also I should mention that when you first use the app, it's gonna ask you to log in with your uh, Bama credentials but once you've used it once, it automatically logs in, so there's no need to enter them every time. But you can see you can click easily, read the articles, and share the articles by email or to bibliographic management tools or Facebook or Twitter. And you can also save the article in your browsing list so that you can quickly come back to it in your list. So by browsing the journals this way, you can see what others are talking about and what new developments are happening. And this can spark ideas and more specific interests. And that's kind of what I was getting at with the papers, research paper ideas. The last one I want to talk about is also a service provided by UA. And it's not necessarily helpful to school, but it can be. And it also provides some entertainment. And I'm talking about Flipster, which is basically a digital newsstand where you can read and browse your favorite popular magazines digitally. Now you do have to populate the app by visiting the library database. So you'll have to go to the library database, databases, and then find Flipster under the and then once you've you look through the topics and found a couple of magazines that interest you. You can click to read the issue. This is what I was talking about, uh, bearing with me. And then you can click, you can choose to open it in the app. And once you open it in the Flipster app, it downloads the issue to your phone or your tablet. And then you can access the issue anytime you want, whether you're connected to the network or not. And as you can see, some of the article or some of the issues do expire if you don't read them as quickly as they as you'd like as they'd like for you to. But otherwise, it just it works similar to the Flipboard with pages that you flip and you can zoom in and zoom out. And as I said, you can read them without being connected to the internet once you download them to your phone. And that's pretty much all that I had to talk about about the apps. Do we have any questions?